fine. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a, I'm going to drop in this OVCD plugin at runtime. So we don't have to restart the controller or anything. I'm just going to say from OVCD project, copying this uh, this latest uh, plugin and and putting it into the, the the controller. So now the controller will get the OVCD plugin. We do this is OVCDB. You see that OVCD plugin is up and running now. It's active. Okay, still there's no difference here because OVCDB is just started. Now, the OVSDB has uh, two ways to be connected to the OVS switch agent, through active or passive mode. Uh, it depends on the OVS configuration itself. When I go to the OVS configuration, you see that the OVS, uh, the uh, DB server is actually listening to a passive TCP 6220. That means this OVSDB age host wants the controller to connect to the agent, not the other way around. Uh, so we support both active and passive. In this case, it's 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 passive, so we need to connect to the host from the controller. So for that, we have all the northbound APIs in place. Uh, for for easy thing, I I already uh, wrote the the HTTP uh, REST APIs which is just to call. That's it. So here, as you can see here, using connection manager and uh, giving a name for host name and then connecting to it using the put message. So now we we logged in, we connected to the OVSDB agent and you see that uh, the connection is established with OVS and host one. Now when I go and refresh this one, you'll see that the name is updated to the, the OVSDB agent here because the OVSDB has information about what are the switch IDs uh, used by OpenFlow and what is the OVSDB's name established by the uh, by the OVS server and we can update the uh, the corresponding open protocol as well. Uh, back in turn. So now it's much more user-friendly here. Right, right away from management standpoint, it's easier. Um, now, to showcase, this is the switch names which you got updated there. Um, and um, there are many SG APIs. We can do a get on the nodes to show that uh, now we learned, in addition to OpenFlow nodes, we also learned OVS nodes now. So this is all like purely, uh, uh, the, it's all SAL model where we can abstract all the nodes away from the, uh, within the uh, functional modules, and we can treat them as node, whether it's OpenFlow node or, or an OVS node, right here. So, so I, I, have here. Real, I, I have a real, I, I have a question here. So essentially, we're dealing, we're treating um, the OVS switch itself as a separate node, and then the individual data path as OpenFlow nodes? Is that correct? Right, exactly, yes. So the OVS is a management node, OpenFlow is a data plane node, exactly, yes. Ah, okay, good to know, good to know. Right, and and this service that is coming up now, which I'm working with Giovanni, it's called the node mapping service, where we will map between the management and the control channel, so that it's seamless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I absolutely know what you're saying, and and, and part of the reason I was asking is is we've actually put a lot of thought on the MD South side into making that kind of correlation easy. So right, right, right. Uh, in, in fact, yes, I had a discussion with Tony, and Tony also has a similar idea, so we'll definitely think upon this one. Absolutely. Yeah, but but but. But, but but that said, the real work in any of this stuff is not infrastructure that enables you to do the correlation. It's doing the bloody correlation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and the correlation work is already been done. So uh, sure enough, you see it coming from me on this one. That's perfect. In this case, the correlation is pretty damn straightforward. No, this, this is the easy one. This is the easy one. There are lots of hard ones. Oh yes. Uh, they, for obvious DB and OpenFlow is very very easy. Uh, that I can vouch for it. And oh yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and to showcase that, uh, we have a lot of back backend commands, which is pretty handy to use. So we can do a print cache, uh, give the the host name, which is the the node name, which is obvious node one. Oh, sorry, host one. Host one. You see that we dump the entire obvsdb uh, database right here. And uh, since we maintain this active TCP channel between the obvious. The OVSDB is a really good protocol where, a mechanism where, I won't call it a protocol, I'll call it a mechanism where it keeps updating the, the, the client with any change happening on the, on the OVSDB instance. So we made it a cache, we keep getting it, and as you can see here, uh, we know the, exactly the, the, the correlation we get is based on the name is S1 and the data path ID is right here. So this is exactly how we go back and update the, the topology right, uh, with the names right here. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, all right, so uh, that is that is the simplest uh, demo to showcase that how integration is done. Now, take the next step. 
Now let's let's go and start looking at the actual management uh, plane now. Uh, now I, we have a lot of northbound APIs that we are exposed, like the creating bridges, deleting bridges, create port, delete port, so on and so forth. So now let me start doing one by one to showcase how easy it is. Uh, now I have a create a bridge, uh, creating a bridge northbound API using the bridge domain configuration. You say OBS host name and create a bridge BR1. Do a post, send status is one. Status is 201 being created. Now a bridge BR1 is created. We go back to this topology. You'll see that BR1 as an open for device has been learned, created, and it's been uh, represented right here. Because uh, we, we create the bridge via OVS, and since we know which controller that OVS be the controller belongs to, we also configure the controller configuration on the bridge, and uh, it connects back to the open flow channel. So even though the OVS DB and open flow channel don't talk to each other, we configure the open flow controller on the OVS instance, and we, we get the open flow node back right here. It's pretty awesome. And when I go back to the minute, you'll see that the BR1 is configured with the controller with the IP address as this one, right? It's and it's connected as well. So it, it, it's all it's all it's automatically done by the controller. Um, now to to quickly do other things, I will go back and create one more bridge. Okay, it's created. Bridge BR2 is created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some ports and attach the ports back to back between BR1 and BR2. So I go here, I create a bridge, and I, I'm going to do a patch. All right, it's created. I go to uh, ah, my. Oh, I miss. BR1, BR1, BR2. I'm going to create BR2 now. All right, BR2 is also created now. So now, uh, when I go to this channel and I refresh it, you see that we created BR1, BR2. We also created the path between these two as well. So then that is created perfectly fine. It, it so as you can see here, we are playing with Mininet here. But over Mininet using OVSDB, we can create all these bridges we can manipulate the uh, Mininet topology right from the controller without even going back to Mininet, restarting it, so on and so forth. Because we have the management power with us right, right in our hands. Uh, so we created this. Now I go back to the Postman, and uh, I'm going to uh, do some more interesting ones here. Uh, let me go and create. There you go. I'm going to patch the BR1, the one I created, and I'm going to attach to the, uh, the S1, the existing switch. All right, that's also created. Uh, I go to BR2 and create that. Um, and I'm going to patch these two as well. And I'm going to go here and patch these two. So now, when you go back to this one, you'll see that the existing mini topology created by Mininet uh, and uh, the bridge I created all are put together. Now it's all like big topology right now. And I can also go and now go and delete a port, meaning I can say this port, I don't want it. So now I'm going to manipulating this, which again, I'm deleting this uh, port, so I'm deleting the port. Uh, you can see that now the topology is completely changed. The, the, if you look at the base mini net, it was S1 has to talk to each other. Now we have added two more hops to the same network, and uh, it's going via this new bridges. All, if you look at if you look at everything, it's all uh, hey, obvious DB. Yeah. Hey, can I ask a question quickly? Yeah, go on. You know, what would be interesting is if I, you know, I mean, if you could do something like, <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, this is L2, but I mean, if you could like trace through it so that you could show that the data plane is really there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it just right now. Thanks a lot for <laughs> bringing me here. So uh, I'm going to do just that right now. So the, the topology is completely manipulated now. Now let me go back to the mini net, and I was doing the ping. I'm going to do the same ping again, right? The ping is working fine. Now to showcase how the transport is happening, let me go back to troubleshooting tool, and let's go and see how the forwarding is happening, right? Now let's go and see. Um, let's see. Okay, S1. You can see that S1 is taking uh, the path between OF1. Uh, in order to go to uh, in order to go to 10002, it's taking OF3. If you want to see what is OF3, you can click on this ports here. Uh, sorry, uh, devices. 
A three is V three is I created. V three is the one connected between the VR one and uh, the S one right here. When I go to troubleshooting tool, you can see that uh, the, the the packets are uh, increasing here between these two uh, ports. Let me go to VR one, which is the next hop. You can see the packets are flowing through it now, right here. And I can refresh it, you'll see that it'll increment, it takes 10 seconds for it to improve, increase. There you go, packet increased now to 67. And uh, we can go to BR2, and you can do. You can see that the packets are increasing, the counts are increasing, and you go to S2, and the same thing. So yeah, so what we did so far is we, 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 we kind of used the same mini topology, change the topology using OVSDB, and feeding it back into OpenFlow via the OpenFlow channel. And the topology is changed, and the forwarding is also happening exactly as we really look for. And of course, the host shall run right here. OK, so all these are done by a drop-in component by OVSDB without having any direct impact to any of these uh, other components. That's the real beauty of the existing OpenDNA design. And that's exactly what you should tout, that the SAL is completely the way we designed it and did exactly what we had hoped for. Um, I think that covers most of it. If I am missing anything, Brent or Luis, you can tell me if, uh, if I'm missing anything here. But I think I covered most of what right, I uh, showcase. Did a great job. The, uh, I think it's worth, Colin, I was trying to catch up with you last night on your switching. Uh, I lost notes. I think I had notes from you. We definitely want to kind of demo, get, get your, uh, you know, the simple switching uh, DMAC stuff integrated into it also, just to kind of get a demo of that. That's cool. Yeah, no, that, we should touch base. Um, I mean, I think that the fact that the first ping worked without any ping all or anything like that is actually my code working. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's called oh. code working here. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> because okay. it used to be the case that ping all um, uh, failed on the first run, and only on the second run did it actually communicate right, because it had learned both hosts at that point. And I committed some tweaks to the um, uh, ARP handler, actually, that seemed to have fixed it. Um, in the long run, we'll probably want to do something a little bit more clean, but in the short run, it seems to work really well. Um, and now you can actually ping all. So I, I think that's actually working. Yes, nice I, work, I, you're right. I, I think I, I picked the changes today morning, and I think the problem is fixed. And what, I'm, what you're seeing now is your, your app working idea. So it's always well, you push that. somebody else demo code working on your code and have it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's perfect, right? <laughs> Yeah, guys, so, so that's exactly what I want to showcase. And uh, I really want to know uh, your inputs on, uh, so Colin, especially you, because you are bringing this point about making it easy for anybody to start using the controller with multiple southern channels. And with this one, what, do you, what is your opinion about this on, on this on this overall OVCB integration? I mean, this seems really cool. I mean, it seems like we're actually doing some kind of fun stuff in a sandbox that most people are going to be able to download and actually play with. I mean, obviously, there's some doc work that needs to be done in terms of, like, you know, making a script that people can follow that goes through everything that you've done and shows how to use it and play with it and do stuff. But, I mean, this is something which is, one, kind of cool, two, works out of the box with no hardware required, and three is something which I haven't seen demos of from the other sort of big open flow controllers. And maybe I just haven't been paying attention to them. But, um, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that will, you know, help a lot. That's my personal opinion. So actually, I'd agree. This is Ken. I would agree. agree. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually extremely happy with this. The only thing I would, I would sort of suggest, and this is not by way of in any way, shape, or form a complaint. This is just sort of a, it would be cooler if, if it did, would be just having basic sort of CRUD operations in the GUI. So you could right-click right -click and add a data path, you know, sort of drag connect links between, um, between yeah. switches, that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, you could cooler. have... Yeah, if you could have it go through without the CLI, that would be, you know, better than not having both is always good. But, but, but I mean, I think that, yeah, this is really, I'm with Ed there. That would be icing on top of the cake. Yes, so uh, thanks for, for bringing it up because uh, we actually, we have worked on it and we actually added the connection manager just for that. So we, we are working on it. Uh, we, we made the first commit, but it's not completely done. So I didn't showcase the UI portion yet. Uh, so if, as you can see here, all the REST APIs are in place. So it is just a matter of hooking to the UI, and uh, uh, we are working both with the DLX uh, community and the controller UI community to make it work. And we are taking it seriously, and we will make it work by the release time frame. 
very 